modules model. A model is also known as a pop-up overlay or a light box. You use the model to highlight content on a page by dimming the main page and showing the new content on top of the page. Here we'll see the different examples. First we have the empty model. We can see that the background is dimmed right now and we have this opacity overlay. If we click the background it will close the model. We can also use a close button like this. Inside of our model we can have a header, we can have content as well, we can have image content which features an image to the left side and some content to the right side of it. We can have action buttons, we can see the neutral one does nothing and all the other buttons will close this model. Positive, approve, OK, negative, deny and cancel buttons. These buttons have callbacks connected to them. So if we use this, we can, for example, decide not to be able to close the model if the user clicks any of these negative, deny or cancel buttons, only if they click some of the positive, positive buttons. The neutral is still neutral. So the user can click OK, approve and positive to close it. We can have a basic model with less styling. We can have a full screen model that takes up all of the available width, almost. We can have different sizes of our width for the model. A mini, a tiny, a small, then we have the default, we have the large model. We can have a scrolling model. We can see that the whole model is scrolling up and down. We can also have internally scrolling content, so we can see that the header and close button is still fixed. Only the content inside is scrolling. We can choose different transitions for our model. We can in fact use all of the transitions that we can see on this page and you can learn about in another lecture. We can also have a demo variation inverted. Now we can see that we don't have the dark opacity background. Now it's the inverted variation for the dimmer or we can have a blurring dimmer variation. We can see the background has now become blurred. All right, let's see how we create all of this. We go into our code editor. First, we'll create a button to toggle our first example here. So we have the button tag with the glasses UI and button. Then we'll add the beta modal target attribute with the value empty. So I only use this to initialize all of these examples on the page. You can use whatever you want to target your model, but you need to initialize it yourself with JavaScript, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. We'll close this button again. Now we'll create our simple empty modal. So we add a div tag with the classes UI and modal, and then we add the data modal attribute with the value empty. This is also a data attribute that I created. We'll close the div tag again. We don't put any content in here because this is an empty model. Now, to initialize this, we go down here and I'll show you how to do this. A basic way is to target our attribute data model. target like so and add a click event so this will target our button and listen for a click event and when we click or when this button is clicked it will target the data modal attribute and run the modal method with the parameter show. So notice here we have the data modal target, which is our button here, and we have the data modal, which is our modal. So when we click on the button, we 
run the modal method on our model. Let's save this, go back into the browser, refresh, click the button. Now we see our empty model, which we can close by clicking on the background. Now I just want to change this to make it a little more clever for use with our upcoming examples. So now we want to add a variable called target and this will look for the data attribute, the data modal target attribute. It will take the value of this modal target attribute and store it in the variable called target. And now we want to target the data modal attribute with the value being this variable here and run the model method with the parameter show. So to recap, it listens for a click event on any of the data modal target attributes, then it will store the value of this modal target in a variable called target, and then it will run the modal method on the element with the data modal attribute, with the value being this value here. So to describe it in a basic way, we have the empty value here in the button. It will connect it and show it show the model here to the element with the same value. So these values are kind of connected. Let's go back to the browser and refresh and see that it's still working. Great. Now we can continue in a much uh, quicker tempo. So we'll create our next example, which will be the empty model with close button. I'll just copy this code here. Inside of our model, we'll add the eye tag with the glass close icon and close the eye tag again. We'll now change our value here to close. So now these two are connected. Let's go back and refresh. Now we can see that we have the close button in our model. Great. We'll continue. We'll add a header to our current example. Just copy this and paste it in here. So after our close icon, we'll add the div tag with the class header and the text model header. We'll change the value here to header. Save, go back and refresh and click the button. Now we see our model with the model header. Let's continue to create the model with content. Copy our current code, paste it in. After our modal header, we'll add the div tag with the class content. And inside of this, we add a paragraph, a p tag with the text modal content. Close the modal again. Update this value to content. Let's save it and go back to the browser and refresh and click our button. Now we have a model with header and content. Let's see how we can use the image content. So we'll copy our current code here, paste it in. Just scroll down a bit. Now we'll add the class image. So it becomes image and content. Then we'll add the image tag with the class image and the source will be img slash 100 times 100 dot png we have that image right here all right then we want to wrap our description in a div tag with a class description
like so. We'll just change the text to model description. So now our content has an image and a description. Finally, we'll update this content or value here to image content. Let's save this, go back and refresh, and now open up this model here. Now we can see that we have our model header with the image and content. Great. Let's continue to a model with actions. We'll copy our current code, paste it in here. After our image content tag, we'll add the new div tag with the class actions. Inside of this, we'll add our buttons using the button tag. The class is UI positive button for the first one and the text positive and close our button. Now copy this code, change the class to approve. And the next one will be OK. Then we have a neutral button. So I'll just remove this class. Then we have a negative button. We have a deny button. We have a cancel button as the final button. Notice that the positive and negative button will have a green and red color respectively, since these are some default buttons, which you can learn more about in the button lecture. Now, let's change this value here to actions. Let's save this, go back and refresh. Click our new button here. Now we have all these actions. You can click on all of these actions and the model will close except for the neutral button. Nothing will happen. This is automatically applied to this modal module. Now let's see how we can use a modal with required action and callbacks. So we'll copy the same code and paste it in down here. We'll now change this data attribute to data modal callback with no value and change this value here to callback like so. Now we want to initialize this in a special way down here. So we'll target data modal callback attribute like so and attach a click event like so and inside of this we'll target our data modal attribute with the value callback just like so and run the modal method with the parameter show. So this is the same way as we have done it with the other examples. Whoops, of course it shouldn't be show right here. So the whole idea is to add some special functionality inside of this model. So we want this to not be closable. So we add the closable false here. So we can close it only by using our actions button. We can't use the background to click on. Then we have a callback here called on deny, which will be called when the user clicks one of the three deny, negative, or cancel buttons. 
and to see what happens we'll create an alert the text action denied and we'll return false so now the code won't continue and the model won't be closed then we have our other callback on approved when you, the user click on the positive or the OK button or the approve button then we have this window alert again with the text action approved and this time we won't return false or anything the code will just continue finally we want to add the model method with the show parameter so it will show just like we did up here all right so the difference between this example and this example is that we have this whole code block uh, just between the selector here and the last uh, instance of this modal method. All right, let's see what happens in our browser. I'll refresh, open up our modal. The new tool button does nothing. I can close it when I click outside. I can still use the close button, but we set the closable to false, so you can not use either the escape or click button here. The cancel button says action denied and returns false. The same does the deny button and the negative button. The OK button says action approved and close the modal. The same is true with the approve button. Action approved, close the modal. And the same is true with the positive button. Action approved and closes the model. Of course, maybe you shouldn't have used the close button for this example if you didn't want the user to be able to close the button.